hello there and welcome back to my channel or if this is the first video of mine you are seeing then welcome now I mentioned in my last video that I had some new elf products coming to me I had placed an order on their website and it all come in I've been testing it out over the past couple of days I got it in probably last week so I really had an opportunity to test some of these products there's a few things like different shades that I haven't been able to test but the formula I have so this won't be like a first impression this is really like my final thoughts on these products but I'm going to go ahead and start out with showing you a little haul of everything that I got. We'll be doing a couple of swatches, but I will have timestamps listed for you below in case you want to just skip around and watch whatever you want. If you want to just skip to the makeup application, that's totally fine. So let's go ahead and get started on this haul, and I'll be doing a couple of little swatches here. Okay, the first thing that I mentioned last time was I finally got the newest shade. I think they launched like a couple of new shades in the Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This one is the lightest shade. This is shade zero, which I do like this one. The other shade that I have, which was shade one fair, was a little too dark for me. I can make it work with a sponge because, you know, the sponge just soaked up a lot of the product. But I do like having this option now. But I'm going to swatch these both side by side like I have shade one and shade zero. So you can see the difference. But we have that shade zero and that shade one. So if shade one was too dark for you, then maybe try shade zero because it is definitely lighter. It's still more on the warm side. So if you have more of a cool undertone, I don't know if it would work for you or not. Maybe if you used it really sparingly. But I just wanted to show you the difference between the two shades. Because in the bottle, they look really similar. Okay, that's kind of like a... You can use that as a primer or foundation or standalone product, whichever how you'd want to do that. So let's just go ahead and talk about primers. I had finally gotten around to picking up the Jelly Pop Dew Primer. I know that so many people love this product. Every time it sells out, I think people just won't elf to bring it back. I don't really know why they don't make it permanent now since so many people love it. I know that they have been comparing it to their Power Grip primers, but honestly, I feel like there is a little bit more of a difference on the skin. To me, this one feels a little more... I don't know if hydrating is the right word. I'm not sure. But it has this amazing watermelon scent to it. It feels really nice on the skin. I've really been liking it, so I am glad that I picked that one up. I probably won't be using that today because I find that it doesn't really play very well with this foundation that I'm using. But I think one might be silicone, one might be water-based, so that's probably why. But I have used it with some other foundations and have liked it. So I just wanted to mention that really quickly here because I probably won't be using this in the actual video. But I do really like it. Okay, and next is their new Camo Hydrating CC Cream. I have mine in the shade 100W. I've been testing this out a couple of times so far, so I will let you know my thoughts when we get to the actual application portion of the video. Okay, I have some new blushes from them. I have their the two newest shades of their Halo Glow Beauty Wands in the shade Pink Me Up, and then You Go Coco. I mentioned these briefly in my last video, but I didn't ever swatch them or anything, so I'll go ahead and swatch them for you here. Okay, there are the two shades right there. We have You Go Coco and Pink Me Up. Really pretty shades. I'm not sure how this one might look on me, but I know these can be really sheer, so I did want to pick it up because I do have the other shades, and this is a formula that when it works well, it's actually really beautiful on the skin. I do struggle sometimes with getting it to lay properly on my cheeks. Sometimes it wants to be a little patchy, but I did get some tips in a video previously that I did. It might have been a while back now. And those seem to help out a lot, so I wanted to pick up the two newest shades. And now they have these new camo liquid blushes. I picked up two of the shades. I have the Peach Perfect and the Dusty Rose shade right here. I definitely wanted to get Peach Perfect the most because I wanted to compare it to my favorite Rare Beauty shade, which is Bliss. So I'll swatch Bliss. Now I'm having to scrape poor Bliss out of here. So I'm hoping that I can get enough for you to see it in a swatch in comparison. And then I'll swatch the other shade, the Dusty Rose shade from e.l.f. Okay, there we have Rare Beauty's Bliss. Then we have e.l.f.'s Peach Perfect. And then e.l.f.'s Dusty. I think it's actually Rosé, not Rose. Rosé. So these two are really, really similar. There might be a slight difference, but I believe once you blend them out on the cheeks, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that much of a difference, but I'm so happy to finally get these because these were rather hard to find in person. I did manage to find Peach Perfect, and then I had to order Dusty Rosé, but I do... I wanted to compare it to my favorite Rare Beauty one because Bliss is my favorite shade and I am currently scraping the little mini that I have. 
And I did pick up their new brow pencil. This is their Instant Lift Waterproof Brow Pencil. I know that they have this brow pencil already, but I believe they now made it waterproof. It just comes like, you know, has a little tip like that. It's a little more on the chunkier side. And then there's the shade. This is the shade Deep Brown, which is actually cool tone, thank goodness. Then I did pick up their new Lash Extender Mascara. Now, I picked up the brown shade. I've been really loving brown mascaras. I've heard this is supposed to be like a dupe, I think, for Thrive Cosmetics. I can't attest to that. I've never tried Thrive Cosmetics mascara before. I've never tried that brand, period, so I don't know about that, but I did pick this up in the brown shade. And then I did pick up the lip liners in three different shades. Now, there was one other shade I wanted, but they were out of stock. The one I've been using the most here is Truth or Bear. The other two I haven't even used yet, so I will swatch those for you. Okay, so we have Truth or Bear, Pinky Swear, and Baddest Beige have those three shades and there was one more shade that I wanted but they were sold out of that one online so I'm hoping I can get that one in the future I can't remember what it was called but I would love to pick that one up too because it looked more of like the nude shades that I go for and then lastly I did pick up a new shade in their glow reviver lip oil this one is in the shade coral fixation I've already had one of their I think the other one has rose in the name like Ro I can't think of the name right off the top of my head, but I really love that one. That is one of my most favorite lip oils that I have tried. So I definitely wanted to pick up another shade. And this is the one I just happened to find in person. So I just picked this one up. And the last thing I have right here, I've had this for a while, but I haven't actually used it yet on camera. And this is one of their Perfect 10 eyeshadow palettes in Everyday Smoky. I just thought this was quite a really pretty color scheme. It's just... It's kind of simple, just a neutral palette, of course, which I do love my neutrals. So I did pick that one up as well. But there you have the haul of all these products, so let's go ahead and get started on the application. Okay, let's start with these brows. And I will go ahead and say that I really like this brow pencil. I think it's really nice. And I love that it's actually a cool tone a shade. Because I feel like so many times... I'll get a brow pencil that actually says that it's deep brown or something like that, but then it'd be so warm. So I love that this one is actually cool toned. So if you have a brow color similar to mine, then deep brown might be a good way to go. It's just easy. Now, I will say that if you have, you might not be a fan of the tip of this brow pencil because it is a little bit more on the thicker side. You might prefer something more thin. I believe e.l.f. has a thinner brow pencil, I believe. I'm not sure what the name of it is, but you might prefer that one over this one. There's no new brow gel or anything, so I'm just going to use the e.l.f. This is the Wow Brow Gel in the shade Deep Brown. I do like this stuff. I think I'm getting to the end of mine though because there's not a lot of product coming out on the little wand anymore. But I have had mine for a while and it was in my everyday makeup drawer one time so I tend to get a lot of use out of those products the most. So I'll probably pick up another one eventually. I'm going to take a little bit of my Halo Glow setting powder from Elf. This one's in the pink shade, the light pink shade, and I'm just using that to set my eyeshadow primer. I wanted to keep the look, of course, today really soft because I want you to be able to see the mascara, too. I don't want nothing too dark on the eyes where you can't see how the mascara performs, especially since it is a brown shade. But now, I've noticed with most mascaras, and I hear a lot of creators that I watch talk about how most brown mascaras are just more of like a soft black. They're not actually true brown. And yeah, I'd say that I've only ever tried two, but so far I can definitely see that. But they do look softer on the lashes, so I do like that about them. Using that same little fluffy blender brush, I'm just going to take this shade right here in this little palette. And all I'm going to do is just kind of run that all over my lid and into my crease with this fluffy brush 
I have been absolutely loving doing looks like this where I just take one soft matte shade all over the lid, all into the crease, and then I just take a shimmer shade over kind of like the center part, and that's how I've been doing like my everyday just eyeshadow looks. Then I'm just going to go in with this shade right here, and I'm just going to tap that kind of right there in the center. This is literally all I've been doing when it comes to eyeshadow lately. <laughs> I just like this really quick and simple type of look. It's just perfect. Especially if you're just wanting like just some really easy looks to go for that you can just wear right out the door. You don't have to like really think about it. I'll have to use this palette again more in the future because these shades perform really nicely. Nothing, you know, super sparkly or intense or anything like that, but just a perfect palette for every day. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and curl my lashes, and then we'll use the Lash Extender Mascara. And I know it's actually like a tubing formula, too. So I know a lot of people really love tubing mascaras. If you've tried Thrive Cosmetics, their mascara, you'll have to just let me know if this is actually like a dupe for theirs. Because I don't know, I've never tried that mascara. But I will say that after I've been wearing this one a couple of days, I do like it. It doesn't smudge or flake. It does seem to come off in like the little tubes. Of course, now I don't remove it with water. I use a cleansing balm, but it does seem to still come off, and there you can see that's one coat with this mascara. But it does seem to come off in the little tube, so that's good to see. I haven't had any issues with it. Now, my lashes are kind of curl challenged. They don't hold a curl very well unless it's a waterproof mascara, but considering that this isn't one, it holds the curl pretty decently throughout the day. But it's more for, on my lashes, it's more of like a really pretty, soft, fluttery, like more of kind of like length and separating lash. It's not going to give too much volume, at least on me. Now, if you have really nice, thick, full lashes, then I, this mascara would probably be really stunning on you as well. You already have beautiful natural lashes. But for me, my lashes, my natural lashes are a little bit on the... Sh well, I'd say shorter side. They're nothing spectacular. So I do like what this mascara does for me. Now, this time last year, I wouldn't have been impressed because I would be wanting something huge, really dramatic, you know, looks like false eyelashes. But now, I really appreciate a soft mascara, especially a brown. So there you can see that's two coats on this eye. And there you have two coats on both sides here. I think it's just a really pretty soft everyday mascara and I love, even though it's a brown, I know it still looks a little, let me see if I can, you can kind of see what I mean where it still looks like a soft black shade. So it's not like a true chocolate brown if that's what you're going for, but I do think it looks really soft on the lashes, which is what I like and I've been really into that lately. So I definitely do like this mascara. Okay, nothing new for the under eyes, so I'm just going to use my e.l.f. Putty Color Correcting Eye Brightener. This one is in the Fair Shade, and then the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer in Fair Warm. I'm just going to do a little combo really quickly of those two. Nothing new here. I do like this corrector from e.l.f. I think that it's really, really nice. It does remind me of the Smashbox one. Or Smashbox and Becca. And I have hit pan on it. I kind of take this and carve out where that eye shut up in case I took it too, too low. Because that's usually what I do. I'm a little messy on the outer corner of my eye. So I always use my corrector concealer to kind of take care of that for me. And with this concealer, I like taking the teeniest little dot on both sides. Something kind of like that. Well, that might have been too much. We'll add a little bit. Just really two little small dots. I personally like to let it sit there for a little while. I just think that it just kind of helps warm up the product and really 
spreads it even further. I mean, it's fine if you go right straight in, but I just find that I like this concealer better when I let it sit for a little bit and then go in. The Hydrating Camo CC Cream. I have mine in the shade Fair 100W. Now, this is a perfect shade for me in person. Now, it does, when I'm first applying it, go on a little... It looks like it's going to be too light for me, but it's actually a perfect match. So, it, I'm sure my lights, my camera might wash it out even further. So, but just, I promise you, it is my perfect match, but it's going to look a little bit lighter. Now, I'm not even going to take a full pump of this. I'm just going to take a little bit like that. You can see what I mean, how it looks like it's going to be a little too light, but I promise once I start blending it out, it's actually pretty perfect. I'm just going to take my sponge and start. Now, I've been using a full pump of this, and I find that that is a lot for me for what I go for. So I decided today to use a half a pump. Of this product now I will say if you have really dry flaky skin I personally wouldn't recommend this because I've been having a lot of dry skin around my nose or I've had to wipe it a lot blow my nose a lot and it clung so badly to that the area yesterday when I was wearing this but other than that it's not bad, but I do like it better when I just use half a pump for myself. I don't like full coverage, so I much prefer half a pump. See, now I like a half pump way better than a full pump. To me, the full pump was just too much. It looked really heavy on my skin, but that's just a, pre a personal preference. If you love full coverage, then definitely go in with that full pump and use as much as you want. But for me, I find that half a pump is better. I will say that it definitely, it lasts all day. It doesn't look bad on the skin. Let me zoom in a little bit here can see how it's laying on my skin. I won't show you my nose, I'm sorry. I just have really dry skin on my nose right now and I don't want to like, you know, put that all up in your business. And then... Now you can definitely build it up to have more full coverage because you can see that I have, I struggle with some hormonal acne so you can definitely see some of that coming through but I'm personally fine with that. I don't really want heavy. It's definitely not like lightweight in my opinion, but I don't think it's bad. I do say that I like this version better than the original Camo CC Cream. The original to me was just way too drying on my skin. Even though I don't really have overly dry skin, that one was just way too much. So I do like this one better and I find that it does last pretty well throughout the day. It sets pretty decently on its own because I have only been setting in the center of my face in my T-zone area just to kind of take down some of this shine. Okay, I don't have any new bronzer so I'm just going to go in with my Luminous Putty Bronzer. This one is in the shade Summer Fridays. I just like taking the bottom of my sponge and really just getting that in there and just tapping that out on my forehead. I don't have any new bronzers or anything from e.l.f. so I'm just gonna use this one which I really do like. I love their putty bronzers. Now if you're new here, like if you're just, if this is the first video of mine you've ever seen, I don't like to bring bronzer on my cheeks. I like to leave this whole area for blush. That's just my personal preference. So I usually just put bronzer on my forehead just to add a little bit of something I guess to mention sort of on my forehead but then leave my cheeks just for blush because I just I love blush I like to have it center stage okay I've been using the peach perfect shade the whole time I have yet to try the dusty rose shade so we're gonna try that shade first and I am gonna take that on this elf this is a 105 brush unfortunately this brush has been discontinued I don't know why elf would do that that was such a nice lovely brush but I'm just going to take a little bit on the back of my hand. Uh, this one might be a little bit more potent than the other one. I don't know so I'm just going to take that. Pretty. That's pretty. I might start taking some on this side. I can also, I can always build it up more if I need to. 
Oh, that's a pretty shade. I haven't used this shade yet, but I really love these. They last, but now if you have really oily skin, I can't speak for you. I don't know how well they'd last on your skin because I don't really have super oily skin. I have, I get oily in my T-zone, but on the outer half of my face, it's more like normal to sometimes dry, but mostly just normal. So I can't speak for that, but on me, on combo skin, for me, they last all day long. They look really beautiful. These have more of like a satiny, more finish to them. Whereas now the Rare Beauty one, I know they have different, you know, ones. Like there's like the the dewy, then the matte. I, the shade Bliss, which is my favorite in that line, is more of a matte. So the Peach Perfect shade in Elf is more of a dewy. So that would be the biggest difference between the two of them. That is so pretty and just lovely. I really like these. And I like this color too. I only picked up these two shades because I have learned my lesson. I recently did a blush declutter. I got rid of a lot of shades that were just really too deep for my skin tone. So I only picked up the two lightest shades in this formula. And those would be the only ones I pick up. Just the two lightest. Okay, I've been going in with their Truth or Bare lip liner a lot. But I think today I'm going to use the Baddest Beige. Now, I've been struggling with really dry lips. So I'm just going to... I don't know if I'm going to fill them in because I'm going over them with a lip oil. So I think what I'm going to do is just outline my lips with this. And these are really nice. I love a good wooden lip pencil. They really are nice lip pencils though because I've had an opportunity to use them without my lips being so dry. So I definitely would say yes, these are really good. And then I'm just going to take that Coral Fixation lip oil from them. Okay, then I'm just going to take a little bit of my Halo Glow setting powder, just a small amount, and place it right in here. Not a lot, though. Oh, and this is a blush brush from e.l.f. But I like using it sometimes for powder in this area. Okay, so there you have this finished and completed makeup look. I, I really think it's really pretty and it's soft and it's just what I look for definitely. Especially more so on an everyday basis. Now, I certainly don't mind wearing more colorful eyeshadows sometimes, too. And doing a little bit more eye looks that have a little bit more to them. But for the most part, this is the type of makeup that I'm wearing on an everyday basis. So, just let's quickly recap. I will talk about products that I definitely would say absolutely go for it if you were interested in trying any of these products. If not, that's totally okay, too. Shop your stash. See what you have that might be similar. So now, for, I have not had a chance to use this a ton, but the few times I was able to use it, I really did like it. It does definitely remind me of the Power Grip Primer, so if you have those, you might not want this. The only thing I feel like it's a little bit different is it does feel a little bit more hydrating, but if it's something you've been interested in trying, I don't see no harm in picking up necessarily. I don't. I think, that it, first of all, it has a really lovely scent. If you love the scent of watermelon, it just smells really pretty. Okay, the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This one's in shade Zero Fair, I think. Yeah, shade Zero Fair. Love the Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I love the first one that I had. That one was just a little too dark for me, but it could work really easily on my skin. I can make it work if I used a sponge, just sheared out the product. I have always loved this stuff. Definitely would recommend this to anybody who was interested in trying it out because it's really nice. And I know it's a little bit more pricier. I think it's like, what, $15? But I think it's personally worth it. I really do like it. I think it's such a lovely product. So definitely, yeah. And if they and if some of the new shades work for you, then definitely go for it if you're interested. Okay, the Camo Hydrating CC Cream. I think this is going to be like a hit or miss depending on what your preference is. For me, if I just use half a pump, that's what I like. But now... I realize that this is more so made to be full coverage. I'm not a full coverage person. It's just not my preference. But I think that if you are, you might really like this. And if you didn't really like the original CC cream they put out, then you might want to give this one a try. I will say that it lasts all day on the skin on me. I haven't had any issues with it breaking down weird or doing anything kind of funny. 
The only thing is if you do have it really dry, flaky skin, it will cling to it because it did that day around my nose area. It looks so bad. So just bear that in mind as well while you're going into this. I think this product is kind of... I'm kind of so-so about it. I don't think it's bad, but it's not a favorite of mine. I like other more tinted moisturizer products better, but that's more so a preference thing. Formula-wise, it's decent, but it's... I think if you tried it, fine. If you don't, that's fine too. Okay, the little eyeshadow palette. Now, I only use two shades in this, but I have used these palettes before. I have another one in my collection. They're really nice quality, really lovely formula, and I think that these types of palettes are perfect for every day if that's what you're looking for, and they're like... Well, I think, what, are they $10 or less or something? I think they're $10, like perfect 10. I think they're $10. And I don't think that's bad for the amount you get. I think that's pretty good price-wise. So if, if there's one of these palettes that you like the color scheme and you're interested in trying, I don't think you'd be disappointed with the formula at all. I think they're really nice palettes. The Lash Extender Mascara in the brown shade, I like this this mascara. It doesn't smudge or flake on me. Now I don't, I haven't tried removing it with water, but when I use a cleansing balm I notice that it does come off in like the little pieces things. So I, it is easy to remove in that sense. Now I haven't tried just water, but I haven't struggled with removing it at all with my cleansing balm, which is really lovely to see. It holds a curl fairly well for me. My lashes are pretty curl challenged, so for it to still hang in there by the end of the day, I mean, I'm going to give it credit for that without it being waterproof because usually it's, it takes a waterproof mascara to really lift my lashes up. But other than that, it's decent. If you're looking for a really kind of soft, fluttery, separated, lengthening mascara, I think you might like it. If not, if you're looking for a more beefy mascara, then you might not really like this one. You might want to go for a different type of mascara, but I really do like it so far. I'd recommend it. I do love the brown shade, even though it's more of a soft black. I still like how it's really soft on the lashes, so I definitely do like this mascara. Does it top my favorite Lash and Raw? Mm, probably not. I for some and it might they both might make my lashes look the exact same, but there's something about that Lash and Raw mascara that I really do like. Okay, I didn't try these two today in this video. The little Halo Glow Beauty Wands, the You Go Coco, and the Pink Me Up, but I have tried these before. They are, in my experience, very hit or miss. I've had them work beautifully on me, but then the next day they'd be a little patchy, so I don't know how these two particular shades might play out, so I can't give any full thoughts on these, but I'm just basing off of what I know from the other shades, so I definitely want to try these in the future. Maybe I can use them in an upcoming video and see how these perform and just, you know, give them more of a chance, but I know the other ones can be pretty hit or miss, depending on which one you go for. These are lovely, lovely. Probably my favorite product that I've put on my face today. I really do like these. I've been wearing the Peach Perfect shade like crazy. It reminds me so much of Rare Beauty's Bliss. I'll have to do a video where I'm comparing them side by side so I can and just see because I haven't done that yet actually which surprisingly I've just swatched them but I do really like these if you like that really pretty kind of glowy satiny blush like not matte blushes then I think you would really love these and I think they're like seven or eight dollars so they're pretty affordable considering and if you are a fan of the rare beauty ones I think these are really nice too now, I don't know if you get some of the deeper shades in these, if they would be really, really pigmented the way the Rare Beauty ones are. I won't ever really know because I plan on just keeping these two only. I will, I will not be buying any more. I'm going to make my promise myself on that one. But I like the pigmentation in these because, to me, these two shades are really easy to work with. So I think if you're fair and you like a more softer blush, I think these two shades are nice. The Peach Perfect and the dusty rosé. Those are really pretty beautiful shades. The lip liners, love them. I love them. I want that other shade that was sold out. I can't think of the name of it, but I definitely would like to pick that one up too. I think these are really nice. I love wooden lip pencils. There's something about a wooden lip pencil that I love so much because I love the NYX ones too. The slim lip pencils, I believe those are called. Those are wooden and I love those so much. These are nice. These are only two dollars. For two dollars, this is amazing quality. Now, wasn't the best representation of them today because my lips are so dry. But I've had chance to wear, well, at least the Truth or Bear shade. The other two shades, which the Baddest Beige, this is the first time I've worn this shade. And I haven't worn Pinky Swear yet, but the Truth or Bear I have worn 
several times and my lips weren't dry and it just looks really beautiful on the lips really do like these i think that yeah for two dollars each you can't go wrong with these now the glow reviver lip oils i really do like i had a chance to try the i think it has rose in the name i'm not sure about that back in december and i've been loving that one ever since so i definitely am glad to have picked up another shade i think these are really amazing lip oils i've heard them being compared to the Dior ones. I, I'm not sure. I've never tried Dior. Dior test on animals, so I, I couldn't tell you about that. But if that's true, then I think these are an amazing alternative, especially considering that price difference. I think the Dior ones are like $40. Ooh. So if you like those and you want to give this one a shot, then definitely I say try it. Go for it. Because if you can save some money, why not? But I do hope that you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, I hope you will please consider leaving a like, a comment, or subscribing if you haven't already. And please make sure to follow me over on Instagram at Jessica Dearly. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs>